Stone Falcon Weekly. All eyes are on Michigan. After several wins for underdog candidates over the weekend, presidential hopefuls want to rack up that state's delegates. And Apple users beware. Mac computers can now be infected with ransomware. Find out how much it would cost you if your computer got hacked. Plus, a prominent figure in the Montevallo community was laid to rest today. See how the university is remembering Mary Lou Williams. And getting all the right notes. Hear how two Montevallo musicians are preparing for a big fundraiser later this week. Falcon Weekly starts right now. Hello and welcome to Falcon Weekly. I'm Hope Finley. And I'm Corey Graffio. Thanks so much for joining us. We start with breaking news out of the UM Athletics Department. Women's basketball head coach Cindy Hilbert is announcing her resignation from her position at the University of Montevallo. A source tells Falcon Weekly that she broke the news to the team last Thursday, but her resignation wasn't made public until Monday afternoon. Hilbert took over the women's basketball program in April 2011 and coached the Falcons to a 38-90 and record during her five seasons season as head coach. Hilbrick led Montevallo to the Peach Belt Conference Tournament during the 2011, 2012, and 2012-2013 seasons. The Athletics Department says a national search for a new head women's basketball coach will begin immediately. Switching gears to national news, all of the presidential candidates are looking forward to Tuesday, March 8th, when voters in Mississippi, Michigan, Idaho, and Hawaii get a chance to weigh in. So who will prevail? And can anyone stop Donald Trump? Steve Nannis has the report. So if I'm president, I'll take care of the big stuff. John Kasich, Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz, and Donald Trump are all hoping for a boost in Tuesday's next round of voting. We want to continue to increase our delegate total. Let's see what happens, but we have some good ones. Uh, Michigan's going to be, look, I've been fighting hard for cars. There are 150 GOP delegates at stake in Mississippi, Idaho, Hawaii, and Michigan with the biggest prize, 59 delegates. Trump currently leads with 389. Cruz has 302. Rubio and Kasich are far behind. This is going to be a very different kind of primary where the delegates are going to count. But can any of Trump's challengers catch him tomorrow? The latest Monmouth University poll shows Trump currently has the support of 36% of likely Michigan voters. Cruz comes in second at 23 percent. But with weekend wins in Kansas and Maine, Cruz is arguing he's the only candidate who can beat Trump and ultimately the Democratic nominee. If we're divided, Donald wins. And if Donald wins, then in all likelihood Hillary wins. And so we have to come together. The Democrats also have contests on Tuesday with 166 delegates at stake in Mississippi and Michigan. All of you going to be out voting tomorrow? Senator Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton are crisscrossing Michigan, but today's Monmouth University poll shows Sanders has some ground to make up. Clinton has a 13 percent lead over her challenger among likely Democratic voters in Michigan. In Washington, I'm Steve Nannis reporting. Caitlyn Jenner just nominated herself for political office, sort of. She says she wants to be a trans ambassador for Republican candidate Ted Cruz if he wins the presidency. Jenner describes the Texas senator as a great constitutionalist and a very articulate man, but she hasn't officially endorsed him. The Olympic champion and reality TV star is a Republican herself. She said, if given the opportunity, she would love to advise Cruz on issues regarding the transgender community. In your news to go, Mac users might not be as, sa might not be as safe as they think. According to security researchers, researchers malicious software called Ransom has successfully targeted Apple computers for the first time. Ransomware is software that hijacks a computer and locks out its user until a ransom is paid. Their program in question called Carringer requires victims to pay one Bitcoin, which is a little more than $400 to retrieve their files. Apple has already taken steps to protect users. The ransomware infection comes at a time when the security of Apple products is under intense scrutiny. The tech giant is engaged in a major standoff with the U.S. government over the security of its iPhones. 
In other news to go, the U.S. Supreme Court has reversed an Alabama court decision that refused to recognize a same-sex parent adoption from Georgia. The justices upheld a challenge brought by an Alabama woman after the state's highest court refused to recognize the adoption she and her former partner were granted in Georgia. The couple never married and have since split up. In September, the Alabama Supreme Court ruled that Georgia mistakenly granted the non-birth mother joint custody. But today's ruling means Alabama must honor the Georgia adoption ruling. Former First Lady Nancy Reagan died Sunday morning at her home in Los Angeles at the age of 94. The cause of the death was congestive heart failure. Ms. Reagan will be buried at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in Simi Valley, California. She will be buried next to her husband, former President Ronald Reagan, who died in 2004. Before the service, there will be an opportunity for the public to say their respects at the library. In lieu of flowers, Ms. Reagan requested contributions be made to the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library online at reaganlibrary.com. That's also where you can find updated information on events in the week ahead. The man credited for inventing modern email has died. Ray Tomlinson devised direct email messages in 1971. Email was a new idea back then and not many people had access to computers. So his invention didn't take off until the explosion of PCs and online services in the late 80s and early 90s. Tomlinson is responsible for deciding that the at symbol would be a part of email addresses. He was inducted into the Internet Hall of Fame in 2012. Ray Tomlinson was 74 years old. NFL legend Peyton Manning is retiring. The Denver Broncos tweeted Sunday saying Manning, inf Manning informed the team of his decision and congratulating him for his 18-year NFL career. The five-time MVP is retiring with several NFL records under his belt. Manning, alongside Brett Favre, is one of the only two quarterbacks to beat every team in the NFL. He's the only quarterback to win Super Bowls with two teams. He also holds records for the most touchdown passes and most passing yards, not only in, in one career, but in a season. Turning to campus news, the Montevallo community is celebrating the life of longtime UM family member. Falcon Weekly's Courtney Boyd joins us now with a look at the life and legacy of Mary Lou Williams. Courtney? Mary Lou Williams passed away last Wednesday after a battle with cancer. She was a pillar of the Montevallo community. Today, friends and family gathered at University Baptist Church to celebrate her life. Mary Lou worked as the Director of Development and Alumni Relations at Montevallo for 23 years. After her retirement from the university in 2008, Mary Lou held the job of the Director of the Montevallo Chamber of Commerce until 2013. Among many awards she received throughout her life, the 2015 College Night Dedication was one of them. Also in 2015, the Annual Alumni Recognition Award was renamed to the Mary Lou Williams Alumnus Award. In lieu of flowers, her family requests that memorial gifts be made in Mary Lou's name to the Mary Lou Williams Endowed Scholarship in Arts and Sciences. Gifts can be mailed to the UM Foundation, Station 6215, Montevallo, Alabama, zip code 35115. Reporting for Falcon Weekly, I'm Courtney Boyd. Thanks, Courtney. UM's music department is prepping for a big fundraiser to help maintain their p uh, pianos. Falcon Weekly's Ann Leah Nance gives us more details on the story. Students and faculty witnessed exceptional piano recitals on campus, and this one proves that four hands are better than two. Since last summer, Dr. Cynthia McRae and Dr. Anthony Panner rehearsed together to prepare for the upcoming piano duo concert that will take place in LaBerra Recital Hall. Recital is a fundraiser for the Patton Piano Endowment, a fund that will pay for the maintenance of the Steinway pianos in the music department. Dr. McCrae believes that the fund would prove to be beneficial to many. Money, of course, that's generated by this event is going to help with all the piano students, piano majors, for all the pianos that we use in teaching and the students for practicing and all. As of now, the department raised $8,000. They are anticipating that this year's concert will show a positive outcome. 
Even though it's on a Friday evening, we're still hope, hopeful that, that people will want to come and hear this music and will also want to come and support the cause for which we're playing. And with help from the Alabama Piano Gallery, there will be a big change for the recital. For practice purposes, they used two pianos, one smaller than the other one. On the day of the event, they were receiving nine-foot concert piano that would match the size of the larger one. Reporting for Falcon Weekly, I'm Aileen Nance. If you're interested in purchasing tickets for the event, visit montevallatickets.universitytickets.com. Rem remember, there's more news online 24-7. Just search for UM Falcon Weekly on Facebook and Twitter to see more stories and news updates throughout the week.